For 30 years, the Negro Motorist Green Book helped pave the way for black Americans and businesses to build their version of the American dream. By the time it published its final issue in 1967, America was on the verge of major change. In the final part of our interview, author Alvin Hall explains how the Green Book helped make that possible. Hi, it's Brenda with HEC Books, where we discuss books with the authors who write them. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe for more content. Now, let's hear from Alvin Hall about the lasting legacy of the Green Book. African Americans wanted to be part of the American dream. We wanted the same thing for our children. We wanted the same thing for our futures. We wanted our lives to be better. We wanted to be able to live in nice houses. But segregation and Jim Crow and certain financial practices prevented that. So with the limited resources that African Americans had, we built our own. Tell me about the businesses okay. that populated the Green Book and that made these journeys possible and enjoyable too. In every town and city across America, there was an area that was locally referred to as a Little Harlem. Walnut Street in Louisville, Kentucky, Jefferson Street in Nashville, the Avenue, Jefferson Davis Avenue in Mobile, Alabama, Ferris Street in Jackson, Mississippi. This is where the entrepreneurs built uh, pharmacies, record stores, there were doctor's offices, law offices, uh, eateries, restaurants, nightclubs, whatever black Americans imagined, they saved their money, often from working factory jobs in order to open these places. And they showed what they could do on a shoestring. That old statement, making a way out of no way, is personified in the entrepreneurial efforts that came out of this. These were places of black excellence. They were also the economic energies of many of these towns. People wanted those services. African-American entrepreneurs provided them. Reading this brought me back to a time where your, vac your family vacation was going to see your cousins and sleeping on the floor. Yes. It was really caring about those connections. It was, it was like a bittersweet to see what's been lost and yet beautiful to hear the people you interviewed reliving that. It is because for many of them, they still keep these small rituals up in ways that they can. When I go home, I still visit all my relatives, you know, some of them still make my favorite cornbread or my favorite fried fish. Uh, I don't go back as often as I used to, but it's a real touching moment. It's a real touchstone in my life that the smells, the tastes, the way the house looks, it all takes you back and it nurtures you and it, prov it reminds you of where you came from, the good parts of where you came from. And the Green Book helped make that possible. And the Green Book helped make that possible. And the Green Book also changed America in a much broader sense because it contained crucial information on the laws yes. regarding discrimination and, and segregation. It was called Know Your Rights, and it was a state-by-state -state listings of the rights in those states after the passage of the Civil Rights Act. Not surprising, not all the states were listed because many states continued to ignore the law in their day-to-day -day practices. But Victor made black people aware of what was available to them. Sharing this information created the next breakthrough. Sharing the information saved lives, but it also made the next generation aware of the promises that had been made that had not been fulfilled. And it empowered them to say, why don't we have these rights? Why are we still fighting this? Why should I still be in this subservient role? So it provided the momentum that became part of the civil rights movement. So as the Green Book itself was sort of fading out, a new movement took place. Victor always wanted there to be a time when the Green Book would no longer be necessary. In fact, he wrote about that in the book. And he said that he would publish this until the laws changed and opportunities existed equally for black people in America. 
as the civil rights movement was building, Victor covered it in certain parts, talking about the various breakthroughs that different organizations had brought to civil rights. So I would say that it was more desegregation that killed off the Green Book. The civil rights movement continued, but the need for separate accommodations was diminished. Where do you want your readers to go next on this trip? I want the reader to see my book as opening doors to other personal stories as well as other resources about the Green Book. One resource that people may not think about is their own families. Maybe there's somebody in your family who knew somebody who used the Green Book. Maybe they've had an on-the-road encounter that they've not spoken about. Talk about those things. Talk about some of the subjects that are covered in the Green Book. I hope that curiosity leads people to explore other books like Candesa Taylor's Overground Railroad, there's a children's book by Calvin Ramsey. There's also the Schomburg's online digital resources of all of the green books in its collection that you can go through page by page. Also, if you're in Washington, D.C., people should go to the Smithsonian African American Museum of History and Culture and go to see the green book exhibition there. At every step, you're gonna learn something, not just about how black people survived and the ingenuity of that period, but you'll learn something new about American history. The stories that I capture in this book, the stories that people generously shared with me, were intended to pass wisdom on to me when I was sitting there, and now I'm passing that wisdom on to my reader because I know that every single person I interviewed and talked to would want me to do that. How did this journey change your life? While writing this book, I frequently thought about the fact that almost none of my relatives with whom I went on any of my road trips are still alive. Often when I was talking to somebody in an interview, I would hear my grandmother's voice and cadence. I'd hear my uncle's son's cadence and his slow, deliberate way of talking. And it was like an incredible gift. And my editor did something that was really touching for me. She put a picture of me in the book. When I was four or five, a picture was taken. I had never seen that picture. My nephew found that picture. And then a friend had it enhanced. And my editor decided to put that picture in the book. And I always say that's an homage to all of my relatives who protected me in the small black community in the South where I was loved and given an open heart to make this journey. Thank you so much, Alvin Hall. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks again for watching, and please give this video a thumbs up and keep an eye out for our next HEC Books interview. To get notified when it comes out, click the subscribe button.